Hi there, welcome to the Creative Output Index for 2017. This is my annual reckoning of how much work I've created over the last 12 months. Um, since 2011, I've been filling moleskin notebooks. I do this for nobody but myself. Uh, two years ago, I presented my work in a public forum and I've decided now that I'm gonna make more of an effort to share it with people. So, um, this year was unusually productive. I attribute that to the fact that um, Trump came into power and it's just been such a nightmare that I had to find uh, respite somewhere and I found it in making stuff. So um, I hope you enjoy what follows. A 1960s art movement based in the middle of the Atlantic that dropped objects from the sky or a library in Mexico City operated entirely by robots. This is the world of air dream. Household objects was a meditation on the ordinary everyday things of our lives. For example, eight ball. One sphere among 15 differentiated only by color and the number assigned to it is relegated to the role of villain on the green felt table. It is the one everyone loves to hate and because of its extravagant badness is also loved. Find a bunch of images of animals feet through the internet apply the Photoshop photocopy filter to them, and then hand paint each one so that what looks like a photocopy is actually a painting. This is paws, claws, and feet. It occurred to me that language is a social contract. It operates on the notion there's general agreement about the names we give things. The current president's tearing up that contract and renaming to deliberately sow confusion. I made myself a set of Lotteria-inspired flashcards to reflect this new reality and to remind myself to pay attention to what is being said and what is meant. 31 hybrid instruments new to the world. With a different wind, I tried to create an entire literary genre of pulp paperbacks that were sold around the New York City boat pond and were written specifically for toy boat enthusiasts who wanted to imagine great adventures on the pond. Palimpsest. These are a series of tape transfer collages. It's been about 10 years since I've done them, so this was the first in a long time. I'm not going to lie to you, I came up with the name The Hall of Hideous Objects after seeing what I had done with this project, where things basically look like painted turds. Gold standard, it's a moleskin, a moleskin that's made with gold, it soon gets old. There's not a lot you can say about this. It was a series of portraits, and what came with each of them were fictional biographies. Run a hot iron over a page of a moleskin notebook till it's nice and warm and then put an oil pastel on it and what you get is saturation. I don't know if the toy is called Meccano or Meccano. It's been around since 1900 in the UK and in the US. It was meant to encourage boys to become engineers. I can't follow IKEA instructions, so the whole idea of this toy was a nightmare to me. So I took all the components and I created entirely new objects that never were intended by the makers. Picture yourself hiking on a glacier when you fall into a deep crevasse. You call for help and one after another, umbrellas float down with things that are supposed to help you, but none of which will actually bring you any kind of assistance. You would never know by the looks of it, but this next volume was the one that took me the most time this year. It's made up of tiny slices of newsprint covered with oil pastels and features 31 countries in Africa. Sometimes, in spite of your best intentions, a project just doesn't work out. This started out as an experiment with colored tissue paper. I didn't like that, so then I added images. I wasn't really crazy about that, but then finally I just called it a day. This project began with photographs of different ancient Roman surgical instruments and then brought into Photoshop with the stamp filter applied to them. Each was printed out traced onto a page, and then hand-drawn using calligraphy ink and pen. So everything was reconstructed, including blemishes. 
This next volume was a toss-off. Uh, the color images actually came from a prior volume written a year or two ago. And then what I did was doodle around each of them and wrote a story about myself as a 10-year-old interested in insurance. Every one of my volumes has a story that goes with it. This was about a 1920s British soccer team. Every profile here was based on the photos you just saw, and they can also be made into mobiles. What was once the stuff of Greek mythology will soon be realities if CRISPR technology gives us any indication of where we're headed. These are my suggestions. <laughs> Like me, you probably wondered, when is there going to be an epic poem about hardware? Well, your question has been answered. By the time summer came around, I had wanted to do work that was more than just collage or using existing imagery. So um, both Primitive Fruits and the following volumes, Birds I've Never Seen, were really exercises in me trying to teach myself how to paint. I've never had the patience to actually sit through a class or learn people's methods for doing things, so this is sort of the best I can do to my ability. This summer, I had read Kazuo Ishiguro's The Buried Giant, a novel that takes place during the time of King Arthur, and it was on my mind when I created this book of images that combine 8th century English musicians with animals painted at the same time. With Bestiary Soundbook, I figured I was done with the year, but then I just kept going, and so Face Off is me taking 1920s soccer players' faces and then just distorting them in strange ways. I was looking at a series of cigarette cards of actresses from the 1930s, and I couldn't help but think about everything that's been going on in Hollywood and in politics these days, and so that's what this particular volume's about. I'd been thinking about doing a volume on ancient Greek mythology for a long time, and uh, I imagined it more modern than ultimately what turned out, but sometimes you just go where your fingers take you. For the sake of time, I'm not sharing the narratives that I write to go along with these books, but by this time of the year, I was just completely done with words, and so did an entire volume of just sounds. I revisited the images from the women from two volumes back, but this time hand-drawn and written around a story about a man who immortalizes all of his crushes during his entire life in the form of statues in his garden. So when added up, what was the tally for 2017? Well, I completed 30 moleskin notebooks. I only do images on the right-hand side, so that's 31 pages times 30, or 930 images. On the opposite page, the same number, 930 pages of text. So uh, that's it. Um, I don't know why I do this, but I keep on doing it. Happy New Year, and be nice to one another.